Hey guys, I'm Mark. I'm Alon. And welcome to another episode of The Next Man Up. Well, hey listeners, welcome once again. Welcome back to those that you've been joining us for a while. Welcome to any of you first time listeners. We're excited that you are uh, you're with us today and wherever, however you're listening in, we just want you to know that we appreciate it. We appreciate you being part of uh, this community and um, part of our mission, this this ever expanding conversation and mission to raise up the next generation of men. And so thank you for uh, thank you for being with us today. Alan, it's good to see you again, my friend. I could not do this without you. Likewise, my friend. Good to see you. My rice to my beans. This is good. <laughs> this is good. Yes. Excited to be here today. Uh, yes. For those of you that uh, don't quite know what Alan is referring to, <laughs> just go to our website and check out her pictures and then, then it'll make a little bit more sense. Um, uh, but no, awesome. it's good. It's it's good to have you. Uh, it's it's always good to be with you in this context. And, sure, man. Uh, I expect today will be no different. Likewise, man. Absolutely. You know the thing. Uh, the the thing I wanted to to share before we got into today's content really is just um, how how cool it was to be able to bring to the podcast a couple of the conversations that we released a while back. And I know we're going back a few episodes now, but. Um, the conversation we had with Jay Cookingham back in yeah. late, late July. That was good, It man. was so good. Uh-huh. It was so good. Jay's got such a story. And it, mm-hmm. it isn't just about all the things that he overcame. Yeah, yeah. It, it's about the man that he became yeah. in spite of all of the odds that were stacked against him. I know his story really resonated with you. Oh, yeah, man. I was like, I, I, I was like dude, you're, you're now... Like speaking to your biggest fan, right? <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Right. Like he's just he's just a a good a good person. Yeah. Through and through, and like it was just amazing to to like I don't know connect with him, knowing the story that he shared. Like he it's just Jay. If you're listening, man, you got a, you got a boy in Ohio, dude. <laughs> like, like, it's in your camp. Yeah, you got another one. You got another one, man. I, I I'm for you, bro. And whatever you do, man. Yeah. And then we got to we got to talk with your uh, your friend, your principal. Yeah, your, James Cutnow. Yeah, that James was Cutnow. cool too, man. Yeah. He's such an intriguing guy. He's really neat. Uh, but I, I just I love hearing his perspective on things because James is just one of those guys who he just comes uh, he comes from left field, like in a good way. Like it makes you think, you know. And um, just I mean, and he's just so down to earth. Like such a simple, simple dude, um, but he's doing great things. I, 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 it was really cool just to talk with him and get yeah. get get him to speak with you and then uh, our audience to hear. Like he's a good dude. So if you haven't listened to his episode or Jay's, like man, go, go back, back. And ch- go back and check yeah, him out. Go they're back worth- and check him out. Yeah, man. they're worth listening to. So, dude, wait. Uh, coming up here real soon. Yes, sir. We got a little shindig, huh? We do. Excited yeah. about that. Why don't you tell our listeners what's going on? So check this out. We're we're going to uh, be hanging out in Westerville, Ohio, um, over off of Charing Road uh, at uh, the Nazarene Church um, uh, with Leap of Faith Dance Company, and we are going to have food trucks. We're going to have um, just some fun things to do. I think we're trying to work with the fire department yep. if we can have like have some, uh, little fire pits out yep, there yep. and like, you know, have some good food, some good dessert um, and just invite families, like invite dads and their kids just to come, just to hang out, to be, have fun and and chill together for, for an evening. And uh, we want to extend it out to every listener out there. If you're not doing anything September 27th, Come hang out with me, Mark, and other dads and their kids who are going to be there, um, and, and and like get to know like if you live in that area, uh, in this area, get to know some other families like out there. Now I said dads yeah, because we you know we want to connect with dads, but moms, please come hang out as well. Like whole families, like just come and be. Uh, for that evening on September 27th here in Westerville. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. And we're excited to partner with uh, with Leap of Faith Dance Company yeah. to, to offer this. They're, they're kind of the, the sponsor for this event. And, and if you're not familiar with 
uh, this dance company. They are located in Westerville. They're a Christian-based dance company serving kids as young as three or four, yeah, three all or the way four. up to adults. In fact, Alon, you are... Yeah, I'm one of their instructors. You're one of the instructors and, and one of the popular ones. <laughs> and um, so if, if you are... If you're interested in checking out uh, dance classes for your children or for yourself and you haven't heard of Leap of Faith before, check them out. They're at leapoffaithdancecompany.com. Fantastic organization. We're just thrilled to uh, to have them sponsor this event with us and uh, would love to see you out for for this fun time. We are about creating creating ways to connect and this is this is just another one. So if you want if you want any more details, you can check it out on the events page at our website, thenextmanup.com. Everything will be there. If you want, let us know you're coming, so we have a sense for uh, for who all is going to be there, and make sure we got enough um, of everything. But it's going to be it's going to be a good time. I look forward to seeing you. Solid, solid. So today's topic hmm. comes from a conversation that we were having in a. Uh, not too, uh, not too far past episode about building resiliency in kids, and and I remember going through that um, that uh, that topic, and at one point we said, you know, maybe we should do a whole whole uh, a piece, a whole episode on. Um, from a parent's perspective, what that looks like, and so, so today we're gonna we're gonna tee up and, and maybe even have a, a bigger theme around what does it look like to raise adults. Mm. I had a a friend say a, a while back uh, something that that stuck with me. I, I won't I won't ever forget this um, because she used words that I didn't, but it squared. Um, squared right up with my philosophy of parenting, but she's like, I'm not, I'm not raising kids. I'm raising adults. Yeah. And it really stuck with me. Like, what does, what does that mean? What does that look like? How does that make a difference in your parenting when you think about you're raising up adults versus you're just raising kids? And, um, so that's what we want to, want to spend our time on today. Yeah. Here, you just that, it, it's it's sort of a there's, there's a shift in my mind yeah when I think of it like that like you know when I say I'm raising kids I think of like you know I'm just uh, <laughs> I see toys I see <laughs> you know uh, immaturity uh, sure you know what yeah I mean? but then but when I go oh man I'm I'm raising adults then it's like huh I don't know there's, there's a there's a maturity sense that comes with it like I'm helping you become the mature adult that you are you are created to be you know um, yeah um and and so my approach can be different uh my my the way that i talk with my son my daughters like becomes different because i'm 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 planning ahead i'm not just thinking of the now i'm That's thinking it. of the future yeah you know and so it, it's a definite shift for me it becomes kind of like the why you know, yeah. in, in the midst of the mess or the busy or the challenge or the shaping, it, it really helps me to remember the why. I'm not just raising up um, diaper soiling, time sucking, needy little aliens. Yeah. You know, yeah. right? Yeah, right. And it's been a long time <laughs> since I've had, the, I've had any of those in my house. <laughs> um, but it, I'm not just doing that. I am raising up, I'm raising up will, um, people that will become adults. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think of it like the, kind of like the goal or, or, or my why of parenting so that, so that I've got, I've got persons who can fully transition into adulthood and are able to care for themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and not just be dependent on mom or dad, you know, for, for an extended period of time or for the rest of their life. Like that, that is why it's why I'm doing all of the work that I'm doing today so that I can get a return on that investment down the road when they right. launch and can be fully sustainable. Yeah. It's when you said the why I'm thinking, why am I stressing <laughs> for you to clean your room? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I'm raising a responsible adult. Yep. Okay. Yep. Then the, this fight, 
I am going to fight this battle. <laughs> at 15, at 12, <laughs> at 9, yeah. at 6, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. It's with the end in mind. Maybe that's a better way to say it. I'm starting with the end in mind. In mind. Yeah. I can see the it's vision really of what I want my children to become. And so at an early, early age, I'm planting the seeds for that to happen Ra- rather than... Um, rather than undermining that or, um, you know, like you said, just kind of being lost in the moment of whatever's yeah. going on. You know, I, you know, I just, the, the wives keep popping up. And so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna plug them until you, till you change it, Mark. Go. But, you know, um, it's, it's, the, it's, it's the why for a lot of reasons. But one thing I think of is, you know, like what you're, as a parent, you, you're, you like, well, you should do it this way. And they're like, why? Mm-hmm. And you're like, well, that it's, it's just better this way. Just do it. <laughs> and there's no conversation. Yep. You know, um, you know, one of the whys for me of like, like why I'm raising this adult <laughs> is, uh, raise, ra- why I'm raising them this way is because I want them to be able to think for themselves. And that why stops me a lot from, um, or it makes me go back and go, you know what? I kind of just shut you down. I, 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 I want you to be a person who can think for him or herself. So why don't we converse about this? Why don't you think it should be done this way? Um, why are you pressing so hard against like this? Like, why don't you think it's a good idea for you to get a job right now? Like, let's talk about this Mm -hmm. and see, like, if I can help you process this completely, you know, and help you think through this on your own. Uh, Because someday, son, daughter, you're going to have to start making decisions on your own. So let's start right now. Do you remember when your kids were in that phase where they're just learning to walk? Oh, yeah. And they were excited about being able to walk, but they're extremely slow and they're easily distracted. (laughs) And do you remember the tension in the moment when you've got an errand to run or a place to be? And it's like the kid wants to walk (laughs) because they know they can do it. Yep. But you know it's going to be harder because it's going to take more time. You're going to have to find patience. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to let give them some space and it would just be so much easier to pick them up or to just jam them in the stroller and yeah. and and put something in their mouth or in their face uh-huh. to, to keep them entertained. I, I feel like it, this is the battle that parents face all the way all the through time. that yeah. raising adult perspective. Mm-hmm. It's easier to just be in the moment and do the more expedient thing. Like take care of it for them or throw them in the stroller so that you can get stuff done faster or not have the conversation. Just say, well, because I said so, or because I told you, or just trust me, it's better. You know, Mm -hmm. those feel like they're easier in the, in the moment and maybe more expedient, but over the long haul, over the long run, they don't really contribute well to this raising adults. No, no, that's really good. It's very good thought process there. Yeah, but. it just it just kind of popped into my head, right? Like we we know that we know what that battle is. Those of us that have have helped kids or allowed kids to learn how to walk, we know what that battle is. Yeah, this is just a bigger version of that. Yeah, how much are you going to do for them versus how much are you going to let them to do, and are you willing to face the consequences? of letting them do? And are you willing to let them face the consequences of whatever they do? And that boy, that's where it gets pretty, pretty hard. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's the question that pops up is then like, what, is, what does that require of us as parents? Like, what do we need to be able to, to do that? Cause that seems really tough. It does seem tough. <laughs> well, I think so. Part of it is we need we need a longer view. We need a bigger picture of mm-hmm. what's happening. Why are we doing this? Right back yeah. back to the why. If if my reasons for doing this are to help them become fully functional and sustainable and independent adults, 
and then I'm teaching them how to do that at an early age. Yeah. Clean up after yourself. Why? Well, because, number one, it's how we operate as a family. And number two, you're learning how to do this on your own. Now, it's hard yeah. to reason with a three-year-old, yeah, yeah, right? right? <laughs> you, know, you have to be a little more creative than that. But as they get older, you know, it, it's fair to say, look, at some point, you are going to be on your own. And I want you to understand how... And I want you to understand why it matters. And, I, you know, there's personality and play sure, and there's sure, preferences sure. in play. Maybe clean up after yourself isn't a isn't a great example. Um, but it's it's one that it's a battle that we face with our kids on a regular basis. So why is it important for kids to learn how to clean up with, after themselves? So they don't end up on TLC in a hoarder show yeah. Or, or, or. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or. <laughs> Or just not a good, like, not not a good contributing person to right. society. Right. Because that fans out, right? Do you Into want bugs in your life. house? Yeah, do you want you the mean? exterminator? Yeah. Do you want stuff that is, like, yeah. A- anyway. Yeah. Um, I-, I tend to be more of that neater, freaker type of spectrum. But but you, you know what I'm getting at. Like, what, what are the reasons as a parent that you are asking your children to do these things? Or... You're requiring them to do them. If you can keep the why in mind, it will be a little easier in the midst of those battles. There's this, um, oh man, it was this YouTube video about this uh, military person talking about making his bed mm. and how that. I can't remember the name, but I, you, I, I think that? he wrote a book. Yeah, making your bed. Yeah, and like this this idea that. That just making your bed every day, like it's something that you can at least say at the end of the day, I accomplished Mm -hmm. and that can boost Mm -hmm. who you are and like your feel of yourself and whatnot, confidence. Um, It also like it connects with like he he made a really good connection of how that plays out in the rest of your, your, your life in the sense of like you're taking care of yourself. You're, um, uh, you're, you're loving yourself well. You know what I'm saying? And like these things matter, man. Um, and it was just something simple as making your bed. Like, and is that true for everybody? I don't know. But like, it's interesting. It is. It's funny. Like for me, like I feel better after I clean. <laughs> like, like it's a hard job, but I feel better. You know, and like it boosts me a little bit and it's like you know i i can't play like that doesn't affect the rest of my day or the rest of my life or how i do things from uh how i how i like do things or see things coming up um there's a sense of like accomplishment and like you know these are little tiny things that you that gets taught or gets like accumulated um that we can pass on to our kids when we say things like well, when we press into like I'm raising, I'm raising you to be uh, uh, an adult. Like, here's something that you that can help you get there. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, just clean your room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, why? Well, well, actually, I was watching this military guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's something. To There's it. something to it. Is what I'm really trying to get at. Yeah. You know, and yep. it's helpful. It's interesting. My uh, my dad tells a story about his mom and um, how she would always come behind him and his brother and remake their beds. Hmm. And um, so it didn't take them long to figure out. It doesn't matter how how much time it takes or how how much time we spend on this. Mom always comes behind and does it anyway. So let's just throw the covers on. And then mom will come behind and, and do it for us. Now, my, my dad and my uncle are fully functioning and, and contributing to society. But they learned early on that well, somebody else will take care of it. I, I can just go through the motions and somebody will come behind me and, and clean it all up. And there was enough good parenting in that family that, that they turned out fine. But that's an example of where our kids learn that... We either, as parents, we either don't hold them accountable for what we expect, yeah, or we um, we come behind them and do it. Maybe this isn't an either or; 
um, we come behind and, and do it for them so they don't have to even worry about doing it, uh, doing it at all. That's probably not a very well articulated thought, but our, our kids will learn that um, parents will come behind and take care of it for them mm-hmm. if, if that is how parents are inclined. And when we do that, we're not, we're not thinking about raising adults, right? Yeah. We're yeah. thinking about either what we want. We're thinking about avoiding a conflict in that situation. Yeah. Yeah. We're thinking about, well, it's just easier if I take care of it than to sit down, explain, and hold child accountable for the standards and the expectations. Well, that that mentality never causes problems down the road, does it? <laughs> right? right? Uh, look, I can't pay my mortgage. Okay, I'll take care of it for right. you. Like, <laughs> dude, I got to hide this body. I'll take care of it for you. Like, I mean, dude. Okay, it's, we're laughing about it. But it's so true. How about the college bribery scandal? Exactly. Exactly. Now there are other issues there yeah, too, there, there are. but but there is an example of parent after parent after parent of trying to get what they want, what they think is best for their kids in an illegal manner. Hmm. It didn't start that way. I guarantee you. I, I 99% guarantee you <laughs> that when those kids were babies, mom and dad weren't thinking, we got to save money to bribe them into Harvard yeah, yeah, and yeah, Stanford yeah. and USC and places, right? It, yeah, it started yeah. small, small with uh, mom will take care of that for you or, or dad will make that problem go away. Don't ask any questions. Dad will just make it go away for you. It starts small and then it ends up in those extremes in certain situations. And then we're like... Okay, well, what happened? How do you get to that point? Well, all the way back at the beginning, you're not thinking about raising adults. You're thinking about what looks good for you Mm -hmm. or what do you think is best for your kids or how can I make it easy on my kids so that they they don't have any stress, they don't have any adversity, they don't have any challenge, no disappointment, no pain. They get everything that they want. I want them happy. Mm. And then it turns out like that mess. You know, it's... I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm going back to your learning, like our kids learning how to walk. And um, I'm thinking also just in general, like just how different mammals, animals, like there's, there's a sense of growing by pain. Um, if you if you don't stretch out, if you don't allow uh, the the baby deer or the baby calf to stretch out, the, the horse to stretch out um, and get up and wobble and fall mm-hmm. and get back up. I mean, you know, yep. our kids, like, like they walk in, like, the, the, my, the, the thought is me is, like, behind my kid, like, with my hands ready for them, you know, um, and they fall. They, we, they need to learn how to fall and then get back up and to to run and to scrape their knees. And um, I'm thinking of bike riding. It's like, there's a sense of like, if we, if we hold away any discomfort, they're not going to know what to do with it when it comes. And if we're there all the time with bumpers, like uh, for like, like on bowling, <laughs> right. in bowling, like right. just put the bumpers up. Yeah. So you, you never know? go in the gutter. Like, and they don't experience like how to walk through failure and how to walk through loss. You're right. There, there, there's no resiliency that will be built up in them. And so when the things come, man, it's going to be devastating. Yep. And you know what? Like, I'm not always going to be around for my kids. So what happens when I disappear? Yep. What happens when my wife is gone? Like, there's no safety net. So we got to teach them to be able to bounce back. And one one way that we could do that is not doing a disservice to them and and holding their hand through everything, making sure they never get cuts, never get scrapes, never um, never crash on a bike, never have to deal with a bill they can't pay, never, you know what I'm saying? You can right, go down a right, road. Right. Um, we we, we got to let them build up resiliency and it starts young. It starts young. So how, how would you react to this? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk in some generalities here. Yeah. I, I have a hunch 
that generally it's the moms that are the nurturing and don't want anything bad to happen to to my child. So let, let's put them on the far right spectrum to the extreme. And not every mom, but like the, the tendency is for mom to be on that extreme. I think the tendency for dad is to be on the other extreme where it's like, we'll figure it out, mm. you know, or like that disengaged almost to a fault. And, oh. and, and as you're talking, I'm thinking, you know, we, we're, we're aiming our comments toward the parent that's on the too engaged spectrum mm -hmm. where I want to do everything for my child. Um, but there's a balance too of yeah. being there to help them, yeah. not just looking on from a distance and saying, well, I told you so, or you, you, you'll, you'll figure it out next time, right? Mm -hmm. That, that cold and unemotional yeah. detached type of response. I, I can see some fathers tending toward that. And maybe they learn that at home from, from their dads. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I think, I think it's fair to say there's a balance here, but if you can keep in mind that we're up, we are about raising adults, not just enabling our kids to, to be safe and secure and mm. never face any challenge or disappointment or adversity. Um, if we can think about how to help them to navigate life as an adult, the earlier we start doing that, the better. better. And, and, and I think it results in better choices down the road for our kids and helping them to, um, to be able to, to navigate life when, you know, a, as they move up in age and, and move out. Yeah, man. Um, I, I like that you brought in the disengage, like, you know, in this case, we're talking about fathers. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't know. It's because I think about me. I go sometimes, like I can be the, I can end up being the one who <laughs> coddles, and mm. I don't want you to get hurt or anything. Um, and then sometimes I can I can be the the far away dad. You know what I mean, the far away parent. Um, yep. yep. But either or, like there is a sense of like this disengaged, uh, disengaged position as well. The other end of the spectrum, and. Um, just thinking about that, like you know, Mark, like you, know, I may, I based off of your story, uh, I, I'm not sure you ever felt this, but like there have been times with, like my kids, I go, uh, should I? I probably should check on that <laughs> with them, but it's because my dad never checked in with me, right? On it, you know what I'm saying? Right. And it's like. Uh, it was funny. So the other day, my so my, my my son just got a job, and I'm walking past his door. Um, uh, I was heading out, and I knock on the door. I say goodbye, and then, like I'm thinking, oh, he got a job. He's probably all got all sorts of feelings about that. He'll be all right. But wait, should I check in with him? Mm -hmm. well, Dad never. My father never checked in with me on anything. He was not even around. I think I should check on. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and then like, you know, we have this quick conversation, you know, how you feeling? Uh, and it's like, oh, okay, you're feeling something. All right, mm -hmm. so let's talk about mm -hmm. that. You know, like, I have to remind myself sometimes. I don't know if there's dads out there that feel that. Like, you, like, you know, it's, it's like, it's not that you don't want to engage. It's just the way that you were brought up was to not engage. Right. You know, and there's this sense of like, you have to fight against that and be engaged um, to, in, to like, to like, really walk with your son um and what's going on and so um i i i i i just want to speak to dads out there that are in that boat like i feel you and i understand and when that little voice like pops up in your head like should i check in with my son about that my dad never checked in with me about that he'll be all right i think i should go check Go yeah. check in Listen on your son. Yeah. Listen to the voice, man. Go check in on your son. Cause that's 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 your know, your knower going, there's something that needs to happen here. And there's a lot of space between disengaged and the snowplow parent that yeah. just does everything, right? There's yeah. a lot of space in between there. So so I think what we're we're encouraging is to to find a balance of where you are engaging and you're helping and supporting. Mm -hmm. But you're not just doing things yeah, for, for your the, kid, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Like that—that's when you get into a situation where 
It's, um, it's not meeting the goal of raising an adult. It, it's more about helping parents to feel better, I think, in the end. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. This is hard stuff. It isn't is, man. It? <laughs> I'm like sitting here, like, dude, that's that's a really tough subject. Because yeah. I can see myself on both ends of the spectrum. Yep, yep. <laughs> and I, I've been there too. You know, yeah. I, I can look back on times in the recent past where I feel like I was a little too easy. Yeah, and there yeah. were opportunities to let to to allow some adversity or some some consequence. And generally, I think we've parented well. But I, I you know, I can even point to those moments yeah. where I'm like, if I had it to do over again, I probably would have let that thing happen yeah. instead of instead of intervening. Um, but the the challenge here that we're issuing is to think about raising adults yeah. and to allow your kids opportunity to experience adversity, to mm-hmm. experience the challenge, to not be afraid of that for your kids or for yourself. And what better way to do it in, in the home yeah. than to, you know, have them figure it out for the first time when, when they get out on their own. Right. So that's the challenge. You know, we, we are, we're not about making the bar lower. We're about making the bar higher. Yeah, and th- yeah. this is just another example. That's a good way. Another good way. Yeah. Thanks for talking with me, Mark. <laughs> always, man. I always learn something. It's it's beneficial. And listeners, thank you for for staying with us. And again, if you want to contribute to the conversation, then hit us up. Feedback sure. at thenextmanup.com is our email or at thenextmanup1 is our, our social places. And uh, we'd love to hear, hear your, uh, your feedback and, and uh, get your comments. So yeah, man, dude. All right. Thanks again, man. And uh, with that, adios. adios. Hey, listeners, thanks for journeying with us on this Next Man Up podcast. You know, we would love to hear from you. Maybe you have a question or an idea, perhaps a topic for us to consider. If that's you and you want to reach out to us, you can get us at feedback at thenextmanup.com. That's feedback at thenextmanup.com. Again, we'd love to hear from you. Until next time, we'll see you later.